the President of the 77th Session of the United Nations General Assembly, Heads of States and Governments, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, all protocol is observed. It's a great honor and privilege to address the 77th Session of the United Nations General Assembly here in New York today. At this particular challenging time in human history, I welcome the important theme of this session which, is, which direct which direct us all to find a trans transformative joint solution to the various interlocking challenges we face today. There is absolutely no doubt that today, we as a community of nations collectively face the most challenging socio-economic and environmental situation we have experienced in the modern history. In fact, I can say with sadness that the situation is dire and potentially and existential. Therefore, without transformative and urgent, urgent, urgent implementable solutions to these interlocking challenges of our times, the small window of opportunity we have to act together will pass to the detriment of all our citizens and the world. Our actions today will surely determine our fate and that of the generations to come. The burden of all our shoulders is heavy and failure is not an option. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, most of the world is still recovering from the devastating health and socio-economic impact of the global COVID-19 pandemic. This pandemic was unprecedented in its impact on the daily lives of all citizens across the world in that it changed the way, of, the way we live forever and clearly presented how unprepared the world is for such shocks and disruptions. In addition, the COVID-19 pandemic painfully illustrated how far apart the world is in the development and the ability to respond to such huge crisis through the top-down distribution of the vaccines with Roger nations being able to invest in the distribution life-saving vaccines more rapidly for their citizens while the developing countries like Somalia waited for whatever was available and they could afford were gifted by the international partners. While this vaccine inequally is symbolic of the existing developmental divide between the developed and the developing world, we as a community of nations understood that we must and can stand together to overcome even the greatest challenge if we have a strong global system of cooperation, collaboration, and action. In this regard, Somali federal government is grateful to all the dedicated medical professionals on the COVID-19 frontline and bilateral and multilateral partners who supported our national effort to vaccine our people and provide protection for their livelihoods through the difficult COVID-19 crisis. Today, we must ensure the global inequality of the COVID-19 vaccine is not replicated with the looming food security crisis. Our world is becoming less secure through recurring conflict and increasing international terrorism and the destructive impact of the climate change. I cannot prioritize between these three interlocking challenges because they are equally as dangerous and directly humble. Any progress we make anywhere in the world on achieving the vital UN Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. In fact, these complex and interconnected crises are the drivers of today's unprecedented international humanitarian crisis, food insecurity, rapid urbanization, and the burdensome international cost of living crisis, which is pushing most of the world's population into a poverty. Indeed, we are at the unbearable juncture in human history where citizens are looking to their respective governments and international multilateral system to provide meaningful policy response which are anchored on transformative and sustainable solutions. Accordingly, we as a community of nations must be more 
optimistic and work even more closely together rather than retreat to nationalistic isolation, which does not and cannot serve our global citizenry in this new age of interconnectivity and interdependency. In Somalia, we are working tirelessly to transition from over two decades of devastating conflict, droughts, famine, and developmental stagnation to a new age of stability, progress, and prosperity. However, despite our contributing, continuing effort, Somalia and its resilient people are facing some of the most complex and interconnected crises in the world. The crises include ongoing regional droughts, which is directly threatening the lives and the livelihoods of Somalia's most vulnerable communities. In fact, our government have called, has called on all its business community, diaspora, and international partners on all its business uh, inter international partners to work with us to do everything possible to avert a possible looming famine. We urge all our partners to heed our call and work with us to provide immediate support and relief to the most affected communities. In the long term, we must collectively work together to ensure that we, we mitigate the acceleration of the dangerous and costly climate crisis through meeting the commitment to invest in and adequately finance climate adaptation in most affected and vulnerable regions of the world, including sub-Sahara Africa. Key areas of investment must be sustainable water management, biodiversity protection to enhance food security, climate smart agriculture, resilient infrastructure, and most investment in renewable energy. In Somalia, for the first time, we've established a new Ministry of Environment and Climate Change to lead on the urgent process of addressing the devastating impact of our national and regional environmental deterioration. Somalia is caught between floods and droughts annually owing to climate change and poor infrastructure. Our people, who have a long tradition of living harmoniously with the nature and barely contributing to poisonous emissions warming the earth, are the ones that are paying with their lives today. We are therefore taking the matter of protecting our environment seriously because we know climate change is real and we are living with the evidence of its painful and destructive reality today. We also know that Somalia and the rest of the world cannot develop sustainable, sustainably without the global climate crisis being jointly addressed quickly and effectively because our whole way of life and most importantly, job-creating productive sectors of our economy, including agriculture, livestock, fisheries, and the wider blue economy, depend on the climate. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, terrorists are making our world less safe by the day. Terrorism remains a persistent and complex challenge which both contributes to and exacerbates all other crises, including food insecurity, displacement of people from their homes, and climate change. Terrorists have no religion or human values. They are violent criminals who seek to simply terrorize innocent people. We must continue to stand up to them with all our collective strength and effort. Nowhere in the world has there been an example of terrorist organizations succeeding against a united government and people, let alone govern justly as they falsely claim. The most important lesson we have learned in the long modern war against international terrorists and the terrorism is that neither can be contained or degraded. They need to be comprehensively defeated wherever they are. In Somalia, we are actively fighting the terrorist group called Al-Shabaab, who are an Al-Qaeda affiliate 
and ISIS separately. Both are criminally misrepresenting the beautiful and the peaceful Islamic religion and values to, to destabilize the region and in the process terrorize the Somali people and their brothers and sisters in the neighboring countries and across the world. In recent weeks, the unprovoked violent and senseless actions of Al-Shabaab against innocent civilians across Somalia has highlighted the urgent need for an expedited common national and international response to defeating them on a permanent basis to advance regional and global security. At the height of the humanitarian crisis, this group, which falsely claims to be Islamic, blew up desperately needed water wells, water catchments, banned transport, carrying food, and killed innocent people who were already struggling to leave because of the impact of the severe drought in our country today. This is the true criminal and despicable face and intentions of the terrorists and terrorism. On our part, the Somali federal government and its federal member states, with the direct support of our brave and resilient people, are responding by challenging and defeating terrorist groups in major localities in which they still remain some parts. The Somali people have begun to organically rise up in support of their government's call to defeat themselves and their nation from the evils of terror. As recently as this past month, more towns and villages were recovered from our offensive military operations with the support of the local communities. We are now confident that some enhanced public support, our government will eliminate terrorism from Somalia. Because the Somali people have finally realized that Al-Shabaab's repressive actions will not end until we all take action to achieve this. In a nutshell, the Somali people now believe Al-Shabaab can and only be defeated, and this is our real source of energy and inspiration as a government in the fight against international terrorism. As the policy level, the Somali government will continue to work with all its partners including the African Union Transition Mission in Somalia in the fight against the global terrorism. We are fully committed to doing the heavy lifting to security to secure our future. However, to deliver the killer blow to the violence and the insecurity, we must think past the nations of containing, the notions of containing and degrading Al-Shabaab or any other terrorist organization anywhere in the world. We know these policies are no longer as effective as they were once thought to be at this advantage stage, advanced stage in the fight against the ever-evolving global terrorism threat. And instead, we need to focus all our joint effort on Somali government's new strategy of military, ideological, and financially challenging terrorism and terrorists to ensure that they are comprehensively defeated once and for all and quickly. Furthermore, the Somali government is sincerely committed to working with all the partners to effectively train, equip, and sustain its armed forces with a view to ongoing forward fully. That is the only long-term sustainable solution for stability and progress, our country and the region and the world at large. This effort is Somali government is being within the complex network of challenges of the climate change effects and the poverty at the present. Ladies, excellence, ladies and gentlemen, without predictable and committed national and international financing, it's not possible to realize the transformative solution to financing It is not possible to realize transformative solution to the interlocking challenge we face today. In Somalia, we are working to enhance our economic capacity 
through a rigorous economic and financial reform program. This will strengthen Somalia's economic fundamental improve public financial management and mobilize more urgently needed domestic resources to respond to the crisis more sustainably and swiftly. We are very much grateful for international financing organizations like the World Bank and the IMF who are supporting Somalia to make a real reform, economic and financial reform. However, given Somalia's fragile economic situation as a recovering post-conflict state, financing global development priorities must be underpinned by a common international commitment to support countries like ours with more concessionary financing, capacity building, and investment in all areas that can strengthen resilience to today's multiple crises, including climate change, security, and the provision of social protection for the most vulnerable in our societies. We must also facilitate and promote private sector investment and participation in overcoming these challenges to transition from simply what is now referred to as a corporate social responsibility to common social prosperity in which we all contribute our fair share and our governments must facilitate and improve further the enabling environment necessary for that private investment. In conclusion, there is no escaping the global vicious cycle of complex and interconnected crisis which challenges our citizens and the wider world. More worryingly, there they have come they have become repetitive and without a strong bilateral, multilateral, civil society and private sector partnership, they cannot be addressed effectively anywhere or by any single nation or geographic region alone. In the absence of urgent and effective joint action starting today, the dream of achieving the UN Sustainable Development Goals by 2030 will remain just that, a mere distant dream. On our part, the Somali government is committed and determined to defeat international terrorism with all our international partners, tackle extreme poverty, raise the environmental consciousness of our population, mitigate the worst of the climate change impact, and rebuild an inclusive, resilient, and people-centered society and economy through our successful ongoing social economic reform program. These are, these are the basis for the transformative solutions that will help us mitigate and overcome the interlocking challenges that our nations face today and pave the way for a future progress and prosperity. The most important lessons we learned from dealing with the multiple complex and interconnected crisis in Somalia is that we must not always be behind and plan for and respond to the worst cases of emergency. We, when we have many early national and international warning systems in place, it's better and more just and prudent to plan ahead and focus on building resilience by finding and financing durable solutions that help to deliver sustainable development for the most vulnerable across the world. In Somalia, we have a wise saying, and it is, one finger cannot wash a whole face. If we work together sincerely, collaboratively, as a community of nations, no challenge, no matter how big it is, is insurmountable. I thank you all. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Federal Republic of Somalia for the statement just made, and I request protocol to escort His Excellency.